Hey, what's happening, guys? Have you ever noticed that if you walk alongside somebody for a certain period of time, and that period of time could be different for anyone, that your footsteps will fall in line? You'll begin marching in sync or walking in sync, or, you know, however you're stepping, whatever your gait may be. Well, the same thing happens in electronics. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I whipped up this little board as a demonstration. So let's take a look at it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. And I just want you to notice here this holiday notice for the Spring Festival. And they're going to be closed from January 31st to February 3rd. So you definitely want to make sure you get your orders in before then. And to get your orders in is super simple. Go to the PCBWay website. Click on PCB Instant Quote. Click Quick Order PCB. Right down here where it says Add Your Gerber File, just get yourself your Gerber. It'll load it up. Sometimes it draws it up, sometimes it doesn't, but that's okay. How many pieces in your design? What size is it? And it gets that off the Gerber. How many pieces do you want from five to 8,000? Thickness of the board, material, track spacing, hole spacing, solder mask, silk screen, edge connector, finish. It's that simple. Click save to cart and you're done. So if you are a regular watcher of this channel, you're very familiar with this circuit. This is a 555 timer set up as an A-stable or free-running multi-vibrator. And we're using the potentiometer instead of our little resistor divider thing there so basically you can have a little bit of frequency control by adjusting this pot here and that'll adjust the blink rate on that so that's one half of our board we've created what's the other half well let me draw it there's the other half of our circuit do you see any similarities there that's right, they're exactly the same. They are two completely disconnected other than, you know, they're both connected to power and ground. 555 five, five timer circuits on a board. So here's the circuit done up on a breadboard. We have a potentiometer to replace our two resistors in the resistor divider. Pin six is connected to pin two. And then we have a capacitor, in this case it's 10 microfarad, going from pin 2 to ground. You know, there's our pin 3 output. Our VCC comes in here. And this is connected over here. Well, connected. it is built over here in the exact same way. And as you can see, these two pots are set in the center. They're exactly the same. And as you watch these, you see how they keep syncing with each other? And even if I adjust this in opposite directions, you're going to notice they keep sinking. So that's where the decoupling capacitor comes in. So I'm going to grab a couple of these polyester capacitors. This one I'm grabbing here is... Uh, uh, what is it one these are 22 nanofarad and if we place them across VCC and ground as close to the chip as possible we should be able to alter our frequencies. Now this is so slow that it's going to be pretty much impossible for us to see this on the oscilloscope. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn off the power and I'm going to take out these electrolytics. That was good for a visual demonstration. 
what we need is something that's going to blink faster. I'm also going to take out our decoupling caps. So these ones I'm putting in now, these are 470 nanofarad. They should increase our frequency significantly. All right, we'll power back up. And let's put the oscilloscope on it. So, unfortunately, my oscilloscope colors don't match up to the colors we got here. Not that it matters. But the red will be the blue LED. That's going to be channel one on the oscilloscope. And I'm just going to set the trigger here. Make sure it's set for the right channel. Good. So you're hitting auto set there. So you can see how chaotic that looks. Let's take a look up here at the scope. And no matter what I do to the adjustments, nothing much is going to change. So let's zoom back out. Try and give you a better view here. And we'll put our decoupling caps in. get a hold of them all right so you see already how it's cleaned up the signal all right now I'm going to adjust these one faster one slower And you can see better. They are definitely now blinking at different rates. So, what I did is I built a learning board exactly the same values. And we can put that in there and take a look at it next. So, we'll power that off. And this is another one of the boards I built that I'm going to donate to the high school for their STEM classes. It should, uh, should give the kids Tangle my oscilloscope wires. A visual understanding of what we're talking about. You can see, I should have showed you this before I started hooking everything up. You can see here, I put in female headers so that we can remove and install decoupling caps, and then we have trimmer pots. So it's nice and interactive. All right, let me hook it up here. Let me get going. I can't thank PCBWay enough for sponsoring these videos and helping me spread electronic education in my tiny little city where, you know, frankly, there just really isn't any. Which puts our kids coming out of the high school here not in a good stead. Alright. Everything's set, finished. Let's power it up. Okay, we're starting with the decoupling caps in. And I'm going to adjust the uh, channel 1, which would be the red, 
I'm going to turn it up faster, which basically is going to make it on more. Then we'll turn the other one down. All right. So we definitely have a different blink rate now. Now I'm going to pull out the decoupling caps. Let's watch what happens. I guarantee you, it will not take long before they find themselves marching to just about the same tune again. And you can see how it's also messed up the mark space ratio. Ra blah, blah, blah. Ratio. So, whoops. I'll put the coupling caps back in. Decoupling caps, rather. And see, that's just one of them. And already, they've cleaned themselves up quite a bit. Now let me put in the other one. And we should be right back where we started. And now I will slow the red channel way down and speed the green channel way up, which is the opposite of what we had before. Then we can put them back where they are, but that is only possible with the decoupling caps. Without it, they're going to link, sync themselves into some strange and funky rhythm. All right, so there she is, my beautiful board. Let's disconnect all these. So that's the decoupling board. Trying to teach the kids a little bit about digital circuits and how everything on a board affects everything else. So turn this off so the LEDs aren't so blinding. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you for watching. Big thanks to PCBWay for supporting. That's it. I'm out. Peace.